guys, welcome back to you or welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here before, my name is Chilin Alton. If you have, thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting me. You guys have no idea how much it means to me. You guys are really helping me and making my dreams come true and I can't thank you guys enough for it. In this video, I am back with another video or episode in my True Crimes of Australia series. And in this video, I will be talking about the New South Wales Stallion murders and the serial killer responsible, Caroline Carrie Grills, also known as Auntie Carrie and as Aunt Sally, as she was nicknamed by her fellow inmates at the Long Bay Prison in Sydney. And I hope you guys like this and let's get into it. The Thallium murders took place in New South Wales between 1947 and 1953. At that point in time, Thallium was virtually an untraceable poison which made it the perfect murder weapon that was used by many. Salts of Thallium are odourless, tasteless, colourless and soluble in water which made it perfect for slipping into baked goods food and drinks such as tea. Thallium was actually really easy to get your hands on during this period of time, mainly because of the rat plague that was taking over Sydney and other areas in New South Wales at the time. Thallium was mainly found in certain, um, well quite a few rat poisons at the time and these days it is much harder to obtain thallium just because of how dangerous it is and how many murders and poisoning happened with it. It stopped being so readily available in the mid 70s. The New South Wales um, thallium murders that took place at the hands of Caroline Grills claimed for lives and those lives were of her distant family members. Caroline's first um, victim was her very own stepmother, 87-year-old Christine Louisa Adelaide Mickelson. Most people speculate that the reason Caroline killed her stepmother was for personal gain. A lot of people, including the people who convicted her, believed that she had financial gain from this murder and her motive was to get the house her father left to her back and the condition for Caroline being left this house was if Christine was allowed to live there until the end of her life. When Christine passed away in November of 1947, no one suspected foul play. Caroline's second victim was her husband's sister-in-law, Angelina Thomas. And people speculate that this was for personal gain as well, as Angelina had left a house in Luria to Richard in her will. Caroline gave Angelina thallium laced goodies, biscuits, cakes and teas until the effects of thallium started to really deteriorate Angelina and she sadly passed away in January of 19. 48. And as Angelina Thomas had been 48 years old, no one thought that it was suspicious that she had suddenly passed away. Caroline's third victim was John Lundberg, who was um, her husband Richard's brother-in-law. And John had been on holidays with them in Woi Woi in 1948. And when he came back, he had a mysterious illness that later on became the cause of his death. And with this death, Caroline had nothing to gain from it. And at this point, people speculated that this is when she really started to enjoy killing people. She got a thrill from it and she felt a sense of control. And we can see that with her fourth and final victim. However, it is interesting to know that her stepmother's friend passed away the next year as well and people speculated that this was also due to Caroline's thallium lace goodies and teas. Caroline's fourth and final victim was 
Mary Ann Mickelson. Mary Ann was Caroline's own sister-in-law, and it is said that Mary Ann really liked having Caroline's attention, and she really enjoyed spending time with Caroline. Caroline was always bringing her baked goods, cakes, biscuits, and making her tea, and it just made her feel really loved, cared for, and she was grateful for it. However, she didn't realize that would be what brought her to her demise. As time went on, Mary Ann became very ill. Her hair had fallen out. She was suffering from nervous disorders as well as blindness and was bedridden. And nearly 71 years ago, Mary Ann had died because of an illness at only 60 years old. Mary Ann passed away on the 15th of February 1949. And Again, Caroline had nothing to gain financially from this murder. Because when these four people died, no one was suspecting foul play or that the death was sudden and suspicious. No one was thinking these people were murdered. So they were buried without a fuss. Two of the victims were buried and the rest, including the suspected victim, was cremated. Caroline then went on to attempt to murder Evelyn Lundberg, who was John Lundberg's widow. And she also tried to murder, or attempted to murder and poison Christina Downey, who was John and Evelyn's daughter, and Christina's husband, John Downey. Caroline was always visiting to be a nice and comforting person, and she was always bringing her infamous baked goods and teas with her. And they didn't expect a thing for a while. And they all became pretty ill, as you could imagine. And sadly, Evelyn became blind and had started losing her hair as a result of thallium poisoning. Although a little bit of back Ground information on Caroline Grills. Caroline was born Caroline Mickelson in 1888 in Balmain, Sydney, and was born to George Mickelson, who was a labourer, and his wife Mary. She then married Richard William Grills, who was also a labourer, in 1908 with the permission of her father. Richard and Caroline went on to have six children together, five sons and a daughter. Sadly, two of their sons passed away, and one of them passed away when he was only 28 years old. Harold Wally Grilled was a lifesaver in Maruba when he contracted cyphoid, 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 cyphoid fever, and he caught this when he was bringing in bringing a rotting body of a surfer ashore in December of 1942 and he sadly passed away 10 weeks later. Richard was seriously considering and talking about suing the council for this but Caroline ultimately talked Richard out of it. Later on Richard did find work in the real estate field and this led to them being able to afford a nicer place to rent and they of course moved further into the city and the Randwick area and by this time it was after World War II and Sydney was dealing with a major housing shortage and was dealing with that serious rat plague that I was talking about earlier. Just before Caroline's murder spree began, she was actually looking for a really good um, rat poison because, as I mentioned, Sydney and quite a lot of other areas around New South Wales were dealing with a rat plague at the time. So she was looking for something to get rid of the rats and keep her house rat free. And the council had advised Caroline and many others to buy commercially available rat poison and most of them contained the heavy metal thallium and Caroline went, out, went on to find out that not only was thallium detrimental to rats it was also detrimental to humans as well 
this gave her ideas and led to the first, the four murders as we know it. At the time, Caroline Grilled was the most unlikely killer or serial killer because at the time she was described as a very nice, kind, caring, motherly figure, a grandmother, a great grandmother and a mother. And she was always described as a short, dumpy woman with thick rimmed glasses. She was also described as a smiling mother and a picture perfect aunt who was always baking and making tea. And part of the reason why she was a very unlikely killer was because at the time she was about 63 years old. Back to Caroline's attempted three murders. Um, the Lundbergs and the Downies only really became suspicious in 1952 when it came to light that Yvonne Fletcher, a Newtown housewife, was convicted of murdering her husband with thallium. John Downey first really became suspicious of Caroline Grills when he noticed one day that she was putting something other than sugar and milk in his mother-in-law's tea. However, like many sources say, he was very smart and he switched the tea when Caroline wasn't looking. He put a fresh brew of tea into the cup for his mother-in-law and he sent the one that was late into the police for testing and when the result came back it found that there was thallium in the tea and that it was a lethal dose. All three of them were found to have metal in their system. Caroline Grilled was officially arrested on the 11th of May 1953 and police actually examined the dress that Caroline was said to have been wearing the day John caught, caught her and they ran some tests on the dress and they found traces of thallium in the pockets. When Caroline Grills was arrested, police did exhume the bodies of two of her victims and they found traces of thallium in the victim's bodies and they weren't able to fully convict, um, confirm her other victim because they had been cremated and you can't trace poison when a body's been cremated. It is interesting to note that another victim of hers that may have survived was actually, in fact, her son-in-law, who was a prominent um, Balmain rugby league player by the name of Bobby Lowen. During the coroner's inquest, witnesses recalled how Caroline Grilled always seemed eager to help out in preparation of food and drinks, how she was always bringing around her own baked goods and teas um, out of all drinks, especially teas and ultimately the coroner found Aunt Kerry responsible for all four deaths. She was meant to originally be charged with the murders of Marianne Mickelson, Christine Louisa Adelaide Mickelson and Angelina Thomas. However, these charges were dropped and she was only charged with the attempted murder and poisoning of Evelyn Lundberg in October of 1953. Caroline Grill's trial took place in the Central Criminal Court of Sydney and during the trial she tried to state multiple times that she was innocent, that the police were framing her and that they were using alternative measures for her family members to speak out against her. And she was in the trial, her attitude, her reaction and her demeanor was described as someone not taking things seriously. And she was noted to have had random outbursts of laughter when evil things were stated against her. Instead of making her look more innocent, however, it really did set the writing in stone that she was a malevolent killer and she even went as far to claim that she was not helping kill, she was helping live and she actually said 
towards the end of her trial that she was a helper, not a killer. Going as far as to say she helped live, not kill. On the 15th of October 1953, Caroline Gould was found guilty of attempted murder after only 12 minutes of deliberation and she was sentenced to death. She did try to appeal her sentence and the Court of Criminal Appeals denied her in 1954. However, her um, sentence did get changed to life in prison. She will spend the next six and a half years calling the um, State Reformatory for Women, also known as the Long Bay Correctional Facility, home. And on the 6th of October 1960, she was rushed to hospital with um, periontitis, I think is how you say it. And she was later cremated with Angelican rites and she was survived by her husband, three sons and her daughter. That is all for today's video. I hope you guys liked the video. Hit that like and subscribe button if you did. Comment down what you thought of it, if you had ever heard of this case and what you think of it. Comment down other cases you would like me to cover, true crime or missing person. And yeah, I'll have all my links, um, all my sources linked down below as well as my link to last week's video. And yeah, I hope you guys like it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. Love you.